What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to episode number three of the Modern Condo Makeover Series for 2021. So at this point, this project has really taken shape in the last month or two. And in the last episode, I was kind of walking you through like the whole empty space and the start of some of like the kitchen and the flooring setup. But to be honest, there was like a big gap in terms of waiting for things to arrive. But at this point, it is really, really close to completion. And I think by the next episode, we're gonna have all the things like fine tuned and ready to go. And if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that last year I did a makeover series of the office loft that we work out of. Of, and that went with like a very industrial and like kind of lounge vibe whereas this one goes with much more traditional colors and also included some feedback from you guys through the polls over on Instagram to make some of the design decisions of the space. So if you guys are excited to see like the final product make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel drop a like on this video and also leave a comment down below of your favorite part about it and also some of the things that you think we should add but the first thing that you might notice is that there's actually a plant and in the last like three series I have never had a plant in any of my own spaces just because I don't really want to keep it up But the kitchen company that we worked with on all the projects kind of suggested that this would be a good time to add a plant Because there is so much light in the space and it really does look good So for those who are just tuning in in episode one I walked through the empty space of what this place looked like in the beginning and it was one that had a ton of potential I got it at a good price It's a two-bedroom unit in downtown and there is a great like rounded window set up in the main room as soon as you walk in, which whenever I'm like looking into properties that either I plan to purchase uh, for myself as an office or as an investment, I try to find at least one like really unique feature that isn't just like the standard layout. And this one definitely fit that criteria, but it definitely did need some work. I mean, the kitchen was like really small. There's like the washer dryer on one side. And on top of that, the bedrooms had like carpet and everywhere had like a bit of the popcorn ceiling. There is blinds and just a lot of things that I feel like could be replaced that wouldn't cost like an extreme amount of money outside of stuff like the kitchen and the bathroom but would essentially just add so much potential and now that we're in episode three I can say it is looking really really good So I'm gonna give you guys a quick little walk around and as you can see, this is like the main area and I think they actually just cleaned the windows a few days ago. So it looks really, really good. So in the next episode, I'm gonna show you guys like the home tech and the electronic shades that were installed because I feel like that was a really great addition compared to like the metal slatted blinds that were in here before. These lights have also been upgraded. I didn't have to actually move any of the electrical wiring um, aside from adding some outlets on the inside here, but these are just like LED pucks that are able to retrofit into the existing cutout. And I have them at about 3,500 Kelvin. And at night, it just has like a very nice glow to it that surrounds like the main feature. You can probably tell it is a little bit empty at the moment. The couch and everything has arrived, but the media wall that is a little bit controversial still has to be installed right here. And it is gonna be about 10 inches in its width. And it will have the TV on one side as well as a fold out desk on the other with with a mini bar in the corner. At the moment, I have the Samsung Serif TV that you guys have probably seen in some past videos. And to be honest, if I didn't do the media wall, this is actually a really good option. I just completely forgot that I had this sitting in my parents' basement, but yeah, it just like kind of sits right here. The power outlets for the mini bar are there already. So it almost looks like it is just floating. There's no wires and you have like access to Netflix and all that smart TV. Uh, but yeah, here's a plant that I'm trying to figure out how often it has to be watered. So now that we're in the kitchen, what I like the most is just how symmetrical, but also how grand it feels. It is definitely a lot larger than the size that the kitchen was before. And I think that was kind of the main intention, aside from all like the material choices, the design differences, and also keeping it as seamless as possible. Just having this span all the way and remembering that there was a fridge on this side before and the laundry machine over here with like a like regular door that just didn't look very good really does kind of elevate it in my opinion. And although it is controversial that I moved the washer and dryer into another area, I think that it was totally worth it because instead of looking like a completely separate, like kind of area for that, instead this was all wrapped in the Elmwood material and the fridge is literally just right there. 
Um, and the handles and everything do match the ones that are on the dishwasher as well as in the closet as well. So over here, you'll notice that like there aren't any handles either. It is just like a very seamless open and drawer design there. And the amount of storage has been increased significantly. One thing that I really didn't like about the symmetry of the previous kitchen is not only did the sink not line up with the stove, but the actual stove wasn't centered either. It kind of had like a wider side on that area and it was kind of cut off right here for the fridge and everything. So as soon as I walked in, I think the idea was to just make the kitchen something that you really do notice right away and you want to spend a lot of time in. So with this kitchen, once again, I went with Thomas and Birch based out of Victoria. They're just very organized. They do a good job in design and we've kind of become really good friends over the years because of all these episodes. And they always have really good input on like design and some placement. And I have my opinions as well. So we kind of come together and collaborate in that aspect to decide on a plan that makes a lot of sense, that maximizes the space, makes the kitchen like a very strong piece and also keeping resellability in mind. The actual kitchen product is the Elmwood series from Capico, and I've used Capico kitchens in all of my projects because there's just so many options. Whether it was like the farmhouse look, or like a seamless look like we did in this one, or just like a standard like matte black kitchen design that I did in the office, it always turned out very, very nice. And in this case, I not only had like a seamless look with the blended hood fan and all that kind of stuff, and the blended fridge, but I also had some rounded slats added to the island side, and that is also going to be built into the media wall design that I've had in mind for this place specifically this entire time. When it comes to the lighting for the kitchen island, I was trying to find something that was not like the traditional type of individual like bulbs that stick out, but instead one that stays close to the bulkhead and has up to four or five bulbs. And the biggest thing that I noticed is that like from going online, these options were not cheap. It was like six, seven or $800. So I actually just went to like my local lighting store and a lot of times there are sales, floor models and all that kind of stuff. And this was actually a chandelier that typically hangs a lot further down, but they were able to take some of the pieces out. And I think for 200 bucks, Canadian, which is like 150 American. This was an absolute steal. It has five bulbs and it kind of spans along in a very good proportion relative to the kitchen itself. Before I move on though, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Monday.com. And if you guys watch episode one, you remember us talking about the whole renovation process and just how many moving parts there are to get everything organized and on schedule, which is literally the biggest challenge of every single project. And the best part about Monday.com is that it is an amazing workspace that allows you to get the whole team on board in a very visually appealing manner. And every department can kind of take a look at where each step of the process is so everything runs as smooth as possible. It is a flexible board where you and your team can record all of your notes and ideas and bring them together all with your loose thoughts and ideas on the unstructured canvas. Monday Work Docs is a great new feature that brings the whole team collaboration aspect to another dimension. And with the great document connectivity features, you can embed live blocks such as boards, charts, and more. So Work Docs always stay relevant based on the information that you might have in another deck. It's great to save you from having to take a new screenshot to update the info every single time. And of course, WorkDocs also syncs with your workflows, so it allows your team to create a truly digital experience to run all the work in a unified workspace all in one platform, which is monday.com. Whether it is for briefs, wikis, brainstormings, meeting summaries, campaign reports, and feedback, if you guys wanna go ahead and check out monday.com for yourself, I have a link down below that gives you a whole month free. So after the kitchen was installed, the next thing was the stone. And I once again used Sal Stone by Cosentino because the quartz finish is just very durable. It looks very high end. And on all of my projects, I've gone with the material choice of quartz. I know marble and granite was like very popular in the last decade or so, but honestly, granite is just something that I don't like. And that's what we actually took out of the space. And marble is one that looks good, but it just isn't as durable. It can stain. It is a much softer, porous material and quartz just seems to be like by far the most popular material nowadays and I can totally see why. The color that I went with for this renovation is the Eternal Calcutta Gold and it just has like a very subtle gold to go with like the standard like marble veining characteristics that you would expect 
and the rest of it is just like a white finish. But I think it's like a good blend of like a subtle but also natural looking stone. And because I went with the double waterfall design just to make it look very seamless but also very durable um, because there might be like a lot of traffic on both sides of a relatively small space, I wanted to make sure that the stone just had like a good flow to it. As I mentioned, quartz is not only like a very high quality and durable material, but the actual layout that I went with here beyond the island was just to have the backsplash completely covered in the quartz finish as well, because it just makes things a lot easier to clean when there's no grout or anything. And it kind of flows with the countertop as well. And for the bathroom, I used a two centimeter slab just so it doesn't seem like too disproportionate in a relatively small vanity. And I like the fact that it also comes in like a gloss or a suede finish, being like a matte finish. In this case, I did go with a gloss finish because the rest of the kitchen is like relatively neutral and kind of on the satin side. So it just allows the stone to really stand out. So perhaps one of my favorite features is this cabinet right here. As soon as you walk in, you see like the edge of the waterfall countertop from the kitchen, but this is actually made of the exact same material as the rest of the kitchen. So it does kind of tie in together. And if you remember in the first video, it was actually just like a mirror sliding closet before, and it just seemed like a little bit cheap. And instead I decided to put a freestanding mirror on the other side and instead turn this into like a more specialized cabinet because it honestly wasn't that big as a closet itself. Um, so as soon as you open it up here, it has like the area for coats and some clothing and all that kind of stuff. And right now it's just like some of the spare bedding for Airbnb and stuff. You also have some space to put what you need there as well. Um, but below that you have some space for the shoes. And I would say you could probably fit about four to six pairs of shoes down there. And it's just a nice place to just keep everything out of the way. And over here, the reason why this cabinet is a little bit bigger is because it is for a Dyson vacuum. So because vacuums have become very popular, I've actually seen in building guides on like TikTok and just around the internet that have recommended higher outlets in closets to be able to have space for like a Dyson vacuum hanger. And so, that is exactly what we've done right here. There's the power outlet there and I will have the actual charger mounted. And so the vacuum can just live in there and just stay out of the way and just have like some other spare parts and stuff. But overall, I feel like this unit does make pretty good use of the space. It looks fully built in and very nicely customized. The height was also raised on this overall closet structure as well to get it in line with the door frames. And yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about this. Beyond that though, there was also the floors. And in this case, the kitchen actually went in before the flooring, which is a little bit odd, but it was just because of the type of flooring that we went with being the vinyl plank that the kitchen had to go in first. So after the kitchen, everything was installed. These floors were installed. And to be totally honest with you, at first I was a little bit worried. Um, you guys actually voted for this. It is the Cardine Corlock Select. And I believe this is called the Warm Brushed Oak. And when it arrived, opened up the first box, took a look at some of the pieces, and when compared to the kitchen color, it just didn't seem like a good blend at all. And I was actually deciding if we should maybe pick something else while we still had the chance to, but I felt like it was still like a pretty good choice based on the other comparables that I had. And so after it's installed, it actually looks really, really good. And you can see with the walnut finish in the furniture, it actually goes together very nicely. I know like vinyl floors can a lot of times be attributed to being a little bit cheap, but this is actually like a higher end selection, I would say. It was a little bit more expensive per square feet, about $7, which I would say is on a little bit of the higher end of vinyl options. But being like an 850 square foot space, I figured it's not worth saving like the maybe like one or 2000 that I would have by going like a more mid end product for the long run and also just on the general aesthetic. Because I would say if there's a single thing that has like the biggest impact on the renovation, it is usually the flooring. It just like changes the whole mood of the space. As you can also probably see, the furniture also arrived on time from Rove Concepts. It has all been assembled and it looks really good. I'm happy with every single choice that we made, including the guest bedroom. The bed just looks so good in that walnut finish um, in the full size. And also this couch that I'm sitting on right here also looks really, really good. And because I don't plan to put a coffee table in front due to space, it's nice that there is like something that you could at least put your drink or food on and also have a little bit of storage for the remote control and that sort of stuff. So I feel like this is like absolutely the most perfect couch for the space. 
nice and durable, really comfortable to sit on. And for something that is 850 square foot and two bedrooms, I'd say putting a futon like this is just the most effective way to do it instead of having like something that takes up half of it. And when it comes to the bedroom itself, I really like the way that this main bedroom turned out because of the millwork in the back, which is the same as what I did in my place and painted it in a dark olive green color. I know green is like a bit of a risky color and being someone who doesn't usually use colors, I was a little bit worried, but as soon as this is painted on, I think whether it is like an overcast day like today, a sunny day or at night, it just has like a bit of a character to it. It looks different each time. And I think it's like the perfect medium between something that is a little bit green, but also not like too extreme. Um, and paired with like the walnut color and the oak floors, I feel like it all did come together very nicely. Uh, I do have some of the bedding all set up from Helix, but we still need to figure out what, like what blanket to get. Uh, to be honest, I forgot to order that stuff um, and this bed also has some storage underneath so it makes it easy to kind of have all of the spare bedding for like the Airbnb and these dressers on each side kind of go with the whole collection here and just give you a little bit of storage as well um, these lights are from West Elm I would say that they're okay um, I thought they would look a lot better but I mean you kind of learn things and I don't think they look awful but it kind of has like the vintage Edison look to it. I think the control is actually over there. Um, but yeah, the gold accent goes along with the bathroom and everything. And for now, I'm kind of figuring out like what to do on this side. There's definitely going to be like a 50 inch TV, um, but I'm trying to decide if we need to build like a small unit out uh, for like some decor and stuff or just throw like a narrow console table. But I don't want to like kind of constrict the walkway because this is obviously not the biggest room but it is nice that a queen size bed and two nightstands fits very comfortably at the moment the only thing that still has to be done in the main bedroom is these closets i don't really want to spend too much money on them and i know there's like custom options of doing the same thing as the kitchen and stuff but for now i just had the frame brought up all the way to the top just to make it feel a little bit larger and maximizing the amount of closet space for each side and i'm probably going to wait until the ikea pax units are back in stock because you can fully customize those. I've had a great experience with them in the past, but I am kind of trying to decide if I should do like a sliding door again, or it should just be like open concept shelving. And I think that's what I'm probably going to do. It's just one less thing that's going to break. It maximizes the space and I'm probably going to have like hangers for clothes, but then also some area for like Airbnb guests to be able to just have their luggage slid into here instead of having it like in the middle of the place after everything has been unloaded. The bathroom is an area that I haven't really given an update on since the start of the project because the tile went in and then like the cabinets and we were really focused on like the kitchen and all the other stuff. But yeah, the bathroom does look pretty good. I would say there's a few mistakes that we made that um, we'll definitely learn from with any renovation project. The first one being um, maybe not going with tile before any like very specific planning because once tile is installed on all the walls, you can't really change the placement of anything. So I have like the vanity set up and like the countertop and all that as well as like a mirror and what's going to be a medicine cabinet as well as like a light on top but after seeing some other projects I think it would have been a lot better use of space if we had done a full-length mirror with LED lights that were built in instead of having like a standalone light fixture above the mirror and because it was all tiled in and the electric wiring was in that spot that we had requested you couldn't really change that after the fact. And the other thing was also the power outlet where the sink was. It used to be like a like kind of a rounded dish sink that I personally don't like at all. And that kind of changed the height of the countertop. And as a result of that, the counter is a little bit lower than like the average in this bathroom. So even though it does look pretty good, there are things to learn from. The only thing that I would have done differently if it was like my own space, aside from like the mirror and the lighting setup, is probably have the faucet go into the wall and out. I didn't really wanna pay the money for like extra plumbing being an investment property. So we didn't do that for this project, but that could have continued to kind of maximize the space and made cleaning even easier instead of having to like wipe around the faucets. So now at this stage of the project, it sounds like all the major things are done and that is absolutely Absolutely true. The kitchen is all in, the floors are here, everything that had a bit of a delay has arrived and it's been installed. And essentially, if I was actually moving into this place by myself, it is pretty much move in ready. But there's always these little things that take months and months, and I feel like usually like the last 20% of the project takes as much as like the main 50%, and that is definitely the case here. I mean 
a lot of the stuff was just done. I mean, painting just wrapped up like last week, but if you look around in the space, some of the things that still have to be installed is the doors, they have to be painted, getting the hardware in. And for those who don't know, I'm actually going with the same door design as in my office loft, a dark gray Iron Mountain paint color with like shiplap kind of design, uh, the kind of farmhouse I would say, and with black hardware. And even though everything here is white and like a lighter gray, I think having like a contrasting door just looks really good because it just adds a bit more like dimension and character to it. And being the first time that I did that in the last project, it's one of the things that I decided to carry over. So yeah, we're gonna talk a bit more about like the furniture in the final like walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff. But in the next episode, I'm gonna show you some of the tune-ups, the electric stuff, and also most importantly, the home tech, which you guys always love. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below as to what you think, and I'll see you all in the next video.